This right here is a faulty Nintendo Switch Lite that I paid £40 for. That included postage as well, so I think this is a great little bargain. It is, however, only my second time working with a Nintendo Switch Lite. The other time I worked with one was when it was an overheating issue. The eBay listing states, the USB slash charge port is damaged and will need replacing. I'm also aware that you need to cut down the USB-C connector on the Switch Lite to make sure that it fits. That's if you've bought one for a normal Nintendo Switch, which I have. Let's see if I can get you a close-up of this port. It is absolutely foobar. I think it's missing the casing to it because all I can see is loose pins. So Lord only knows what's actually happened to it. Condition wise, we have some scuff marks on the screen here, but overall it's not too bad, in my opinion, for 40 pounds. I'm also aware that the cases for these can be a little bit fiddly when taking them apart, but we're just gonna go for it. We're just gonna get on with it. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. Creating your own PCB could not be simpler. However, you can also make it as advanced as you want it to be. Enter the dimensions of the board, how many boards you actually like, finally adjust the layers and the thickness, and you're good to go. The next page is where you can go more in depth if you'd like. For example, you could have a yellow PCB. Can you imagine? PCBWay also have a shared projects page. Here you can follow your favorite creator, like their post, use their creations, and even comment on the project. Use the link in the description for a $5 welcome bonus. I've managed to get the actual board out and I'm just cleaning up the thermal paste now. But as far as disassembly goes, it's not actually that bad. It equally takes as long as what the original Nintendo Switch does, to be honest. Which again, isn't horrific when you think about it. And I also think that the M92T36 chip, which I believe has gone faulty on this board, which I'll show in a second, I think it's on the back instead of the front. Even though I replaced the fan on one of these, I've never actually taken it out of the case. So this is all new to me. Let's get a good look at the actual port. Oh dear. This poor little charging port has been dispatched. As for the connections, we look okay in terms of broken traces, but if you're new to the channel, my luck with Nintendo Switch charging ports isn't that great. I do see a few bent pins at the back. That might be worrying for the actual traces themselves. I'm hoping that we don't have any ripped. Let's get this charging port off the board. I've put a little bit of electrical tape around this connector here just in case, but I'm gonna go from underneath anyway. So we should be good to go. Temperature I'm using 460 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 80%. And it's just gonna take a little bit of time to get this off the board, I think. I'm not gonna add any leaded solder. Let's go. You can see the solder starting to wet on the ground holes. And give it a little nudge. There we go. Nice, okay, no missing pads I think. I don't want to speak too soon. Look at that, nice clean pull and luckily no missing pads, which is an absolute result. Just want to check the back as well, make sure we're all good. In which case we are, yeah, looking nice and clean. I'm just going to take a soldering iron and I'm going to add some leaded solder into all of these holes and then I'm going to wick away all of the solder. If for whatever reason I'm unable to wick away, what I'll do is grab the hot air gun, turn the board around and then use my solder sucker to clear out these holes. It's probably going to be these ones, the ground ones that are going to cause me an issue. This one here likes to, uh, likes to annoy me. So let's just get all this solder off. Fume extractor on and let's wick away. Now we've got the charging port off, which you can see here, it was an okay job. I was very nervous using the solder the solder sucker here, purely because of the fact how many components are around it. We've done an okay job. However, if I turn this around, I did mess up a tiny bit when I took the port off. This is still all connected to where it needs to be, but it's wonky, so I will need to reflow this back into place. And also, if you look up here, you can see that there's a tiny little, I'm guessing, resistor out of place here. This one's a little bit out of alignment as well, so we just need to pour some flux on here and some flux just down by the connector down the bottom and then reflow it from the bottom of the board. Port extraction in itself though was, was fine. If we turn around to the back, here we have M92T36. There is a substance around it and it's not my flux, that's for sure. It's, it's too dry and crispy to be my flux. So I don't know whether because of that port situation, the M92 chip took a lot of heat because you can see a little bit of burnt flux poured out from the side here, here and here. Now I'm used to working on M92T36 chips on the original Nintendo Switch, but as far as I'm aware, it's the same chip. So I'm going to put my meter into continuity mode and I've got the black probe on ground and we're going to check for shorts. These sides of the cap should be fine, which they are. These ones ground, perfect. 
That's good. That's okay. This one's okay. I'm guessing this is the dreaded CPU cap. I have a short to ground on this one here, and I don't know if it's meant to be short to ground on both sides. I'm gonna guess it's meant to be short to ground here, but potentially not here. And because we have some markings on the chip, I'm gonna take M92T36 off and replace it anyway. Even if it doesn't resolve this part, I'm gonna replace the chip. Let's put a tiny bit of flux around it, and let's get the chip off. Nice and straightforward removal. I'm gonna see if that short's still there. And it doesn't look like it. Okay, sweet. So that short's gone now, so I think it was a faulty M92 chip. Now I'm gonna put the new one on. Quickly check the soldering job that we've just done. How are we looking? Looking good, and this side? Looking good as well. Nice. Nice. Let's clean up with some IPA. I just prefer alcohol. Quick clean with a cotton swab. Just make sure we get as much flux off the board as possible, as always. 10 times better. Do we still have a short on this cap or is it gone now? Completely gone, look at that. Nice. I'll just check the others quick. I think. We're good to go. Nice. For those curious as well, this cap in diode mode reads 0.529 and the other side is in fact ground. Here we have the two differences in charging port. On the right we have the switch light charging port and on the left we have the original switch charging port. And you can see it's probably not even a mil. I think this is probably about 0.1 millimeter difference. However, if I don't cut this charging port down to this size, it won't fit in the case. So I almost have to go, you see this notch here, I almost have to go just, literally just above that with the Dremel to make sure it's the same as this one. Everything else is identical. Maybe the only difference is the size of this clip thing here, but I'm sure we'll be fine. I think it might be a little bit easier to trim this when it's on the PCB itself. After watching some videos from, you know, like the coder, he always does it in the PCB. So that's what I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and put the port on first, then I'll trim it. Get some flux on the board. I'm gonna use some leaded solder. That looks nice and hunky-dory. Port all prepared. Here we go, moment of truth. Flux here. Like I said as well, I'm gonna need a drop of flux here and also by the connector here. 450 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 50%. Let's now just quickly give these pins a little touch up. That one's loose, so it's just this one here. It's still wiggling. I'm actually gonna go for another reflow because of this pin and some of these, even though they don't wiggle too much, they just don't feel too secure. So I'm just gonna go for another reflow. I feel a lot more confident now. So I'm gonna poke around, solid, solid. Yeah, they're all 10 times more solid than what they were, so I'm happy that I went for the option of a reflow. Now I just need to fill in the holes. And this is the final job. Every pin looks okay. I've got enough solder on this leg, this leg, and this leg. This one's a little bit short, but these ones will compensate. I didn't actually touch on the connector earlier, and I think I've done a good job of putting it back where it should go. Maybe there's a little bit of flux in here that I need to clean up. Yes, there is. And the resistors up here are back in their original positions. So at this point, you guys uh, comment down below and let me know what you think of this port. If I turn the board around, yeah, we're pretty clean. 
and the anchor points I'm happy with. I've come a very, very long way, but I'd be a fool now to mess it up. I need to use the Dremel to drill this back so that it at least fits in the case. So let's do that now. Can you see here, I've actually put, <laughs> there is a port on top of this port, but can you see, oh, can you see the difference of how far more I've got to go? The top one is the original switch light port. You can see I've got a tiny like fraction to go and then we'll be there. This is scary stuff by the way. Doing it for your first time anyway is, is scary. I think this is as close as we're gonna get and it doesn't look horrific in my opinion. However, if we look inside the port, which is our next job, you will see all of the metal shards. Can you see all of that? We need to get all of that out because metal is conductive and we don't want anything else shorting out. So I need to give this a good clean with IPA and a toothbrush. Has this, yes, look at that. It's come out 10 times better than I thought it would. Like hardly any metal shards in there, if any at all. That's amazing. Lovely. I wonder if it works. I've just done some fine tuning to the port because it wasn't fitting in the case properly. I had to go a little bit further down, but now look at the edges as well. So smooth. I've done it off camera, so it was a lot easier and there's no metal shards in there. As you can see, we've cleaned up nicely. Let's put the shell on. Right now, I am a hot, sweaty mess. As you can see from my station, I've cleaned everything up because I don't want to come to terms with testing this to see if it works. We're about to give it a test. I'm actually hopeful that one side of the port will work. However, if we get a display on the screen. I don't think it's gonna work the other way. I've just got a bad reputation when it comes to Nintendo Switches. <sighs> here we go. Do we get anything on the screen? We're looking up here. That's really good. The battery might be really flat. Let's go, come on. That's what I'm talking about. That's relief. That's relief that it works on one side. Does it work on the other side? Did we do a good enough job? Come on, please. This will be the first one, I think. Let's go, man, back to back, yes. Oh, I can't believe that works. I'm sweating so much. So the charging port works. Let me give this a little bit of a wiggle. We're good, like we're not losing anything here when I wiggle. We have got fast charging, which is good news. The console's on, which is even better news. However, we do have a parental lock, so I'm gonna have to get that sorted. But I've tested everything else on this Nintendo Switch. When I was taking the case apart, the plastic above the game card reader just fell off. Maybe I'll sell it as is, obviously just a bit cheaper because of this, or I'll do like a shell swap, which I've not done before, to be fair. If you enjoyed watching this, you'll enjoy this video where I attempt to fix some more Nintendo Switches. Have a great weekend, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace. Let's go.